Hi, friends. Welcome back to Live at the Roxy. Uh, today, why on earth would she bring on her mortal enemy, you guys have been asking me, because uh, he actually happens to be one of my dear friends, despite wow. uh, my, uh, look at me not muting my thing, so professional, despite my better judgment, Tom Dagnino in the house, uh, shirtless and all, putting on, what the fuck did you just put on, orange lipstick? No, no, it's sun bomb. Uh, I was just with, yeah, 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 well, it's sun bomb. This is something that I don't what know. What is Sun Bomb? Chapstick with SPF in it? Yeah, but then there's other stuff in here too. And it's like, like what? To make your lips soft? Well, they're already soft. This just makes them softer. Oh my God. It's going to be such a weird show today because, first of all, you're the weirdest human being I know. Second of all, I wanted to just get this out of the way at the very top of the show. Yeah. I sent you a video yesterday of Jason Derulo. Yes. And I had to send this to you because mm -hmm. I just like, and for anybody on the stream right now who doesn't know Tom Dagnino, which I doubt is many of you guys, most of you, of course, know Finstock, uh, he eats his bananas like a fucking serial killer where he uh, takes the entire peel off of the banana and then eats the banana like it's a fucking corn on the cob. That is my, when I picture you now, that is how you live in my head. Shirtless really? eating a banana Corn on the cob style. I think that's hot. I mean, look, here's you what you. I, well, yeah. I mean, you're not the only one who noticed the eating of the banana. Now, it's not my fault that people watch my every move when we're at the Schmodown. So when we, you know, sitting there eating the banana, I don't have any problem with it, you know, but uh, apparently a lot of other people do. Well, you don't have any problem with anything. The word, no, I don't. The word sociopath gets thrown around. The word psychopath gets thrown around. And also the word sexy gets thrown around. So it's like, a, there's a- it's, Do you think you're any of those three things? I think I'm all those things, but I think I'm a, a, you know, it's a psychopath and a sociopath, which are, it's not that much of a difference, but I'm like a re-engineered re sociopath, basically. What, what the fuck does that mean? It's like, I don't have the murder chip or like that stalking crazy chip, you know? What chips have, do you have then? The mentality of winning sociopaths don't lose they just commit stupid crimes but they shouldn't do that so i'm what i'm saying is i'm a borderline sociopath without that kind of like chip so i have it lacks that kind of chip so it's a you know but i would say wouldn't you say that other people also win it's not just sociopaths that win like why don't you just have the chip then of a winner why do you have the sociopath chip because behind every winner there's a sociopath it's true is it pronounced the way you're saying it or I'm saying it? A sociopath. Yeah, but why do you make it sound like a SH, like socio? And I say socio. Because I'm, I'm from New York and you're from Boston. Yeah, but which one's the way that it is? You say tomato, I say tomato, you know? I, and tomato's wrong for sure. No, not for, no, not in Italy. They say, you want the tomato? And I say, I'm coming here tomorrow. They're like, no, tomato, like a tomato. Yeah. I can't with you. I legit can't. All right. What, what's going on with you? I know you're drinking something because you just did some weird ass workout. What is it? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, I need to work out outside because I don't like staying inside. So and because it's warm as hell here and it's good to get the sun in while you're also getting your workout in. I'll say that. Of course. It kills the, uh, you know, the virus. So what I was doing was uh, pull, pull up. Uh, yeah, it does. UV light. You like think you think if you have the virus and you spend time outside, uh, you should drink the Lysol and have the UV light enter your blood? No, well, I mean not that not that drastic, but I mean vitamin D, the UV rays, and just fresh air kills okay. everything. All if right, you're fine. sitting in the house all day long, you're bound to get sick. You're breathing in your own germs. You're coughing. You're doing this, that, and the other thing. This is literally the most bullshit thing I've ever heard. If you stay home, you're going to get the virus? No. If you sit in your house all day, you go on your porch, you, you need fresh air. The body needs fresh air. The immune system needs to be challenged on a consistent basis. Now, if you're sitting there in your house twiddling your thumbs with hand sanitizer every time you touch like a, you know, your chapstick or something, you're bound to get something. It might not be this virus, but you're bound to get something else. And then you're- what if it's sun bomb instead of chapstick? Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's why I have it. Okay. So you were outside mm -hmm. and doing what? I was doing pull-ups on a, a, a light post. Did you did you use Purell on the light post? Nobody could reach it but me. Like you got Because you're the tallest person on the planet? No, you got to climb the tree off to the right and then suspend yourself probably about almost 10 feet into the air. So no one's really jumping unless they're a Wait, what do you mean 10 feet into the air? I have to climb the tree to get to the pipe. 
So I shimmy across. And you do that because you, there's nowhere else to do pull-ups? Well, I do it because a lot of cars drive by and they honk the horn, you know? So I'm just to the fruit it stuff. makes you feel good about yourself? Better, better. It makes me feel better than I already do. Are you using this time to get fit? <sighs> I'm in the best shape of my life. Are you kidding? Are you really? Yeah. Not even a question about it. I can't handle that right now. Like I did. So I ordered you guys at home. No, I ordered a bike off of QVC, like a stationary bike. I know that sounds like the oldest thing that I've ever done, but it was the best move I've ever made. It is a fucking gangster bike. It's got all the levels and it's been incredible. So I'm doing cardio every day, but I'm having a really hard time staying strong. I feel mm-hmm. like it's easier to say skinny during this time, but I feel like I'm a little frail bitch. Like I legit can't. I The other day, what, what the fuck was I lifting? Like a pot. And I was mm-hmm. like, ow, ow, really? it's so heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not going outside and doing anything. Well, I am going outside, but I'm not going outside and railing a tree. Well, that's what you should be doing. How would I do that? Uh, just come over. I'll, I'll get you up there. I'll you know, boost you up and get up there. I can't see yeah. you. We're social distancing. Says who? Social distancing. They're about to reopen the country. Are you not social distancing right now? Yeah, of course I am. But I got, I got, I got, you know, in-house, uh, in-house stuff. So I don't really care. What does that mean? You've got in-house stuff. You know, in-house vagina. You know, you don't have to go anywhere. You, you know, social distancing is. Hey, is when so- did this come to vagina? I thought that we were talking about working out. That's your workout. Well, yeah, that's one of them. You know. So I mean, I- look, you got to look at it this way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, people who are who are who are single and don't have the people in their house with them are it, it could be it could be a problem. It could be a problem from people. I could see it totally how Yeah, what is. would you do right now? So obviously I, I would refer to her as your girlfriend. I guess you would refer to her as your in-house vagina. What would you do if you didn't have in-house vagina right now? Uh I'd have a I would have used all my money that I made from walkies and bought a a, a, a walking talking sex doll from China. Why does she have to talk? Because I, I'm into that. I don't like a girl who says nothing in bed, so I'm going to program her to say what I want, you know? Even if she's a robot? Yeah, you could do that now. They're fully programmable. My buddy's got one. Have you ever I'm used ready. one of those? Uh, Not a real one. Not, not, I've seen one. And they, you, can, like, you can run them if you want. They look legitimate? Oh, my God. They're hotter than half the girls I know. How, this is a weird question. How do they get wet? They don't? No, you. they come with a, a lubricant. And you just have to like put it in every time. Yeah, that's what she said. You know, I'm not into it, uh, guys. I, they have guy ones too. Yeah, but I'm just not into that. For me, and I've I think I've said this to you before. Like my head and my vagina are one thing. Like I couldn't fuck a doll and ever get off in any kind of way. I just it's yeah, one thing. Yeah, but girls don't really need a doll. They have they have a lot of other sex toys. Yeah, totally. But you just oh. said there are guy ones, and I'm not into that. I don't need like a, a fake dude talking to me that's a robot. Why not? You could like slap them. You could do whatever you want to them, you know? But why would I do that? <sighs> why wouldn't you? You know, if you make sure you have a lot of pent up anger towards dudes, why not just I do? Slap? Yeah, why not? I, so every girl does. I don't think I do. I think I have a lot. Well, maybe I have a lot of pent up anger in general. I think I don't well, know that there you go. towards dudes, but just in general. Uh, in general. Larry Lee's always our first super chat of the day. He said, "Hit that like button." Uh, thank you for pimping out the stream, Larry. I appreciate yeah. you, Tom. We do have questions in the Patreon for you. Oh, we'll we? be getting questions in the Perfect. stream labs. Yeah, things Look, going I on. I shaved my hair. I see that. You like it? What What's the deal right now? All of you guys, did you get on one text thread? You, Christian, Brett, you all were like, yeah, let's all be shave head buddies. I actually no. like it more than I would think I would. Yeah, no, I, I like it. It, it. I have a perfectly round head. See? See the side angle here? I have a fucked up head. See, that's My indents here so severely. Yeah, yeah. You do have a round head, but you have a big forehead. Oh, yeah. Well, of course. But Why, I got, of course? Yeah, I got big other things, too. I mean, that just runs in my family that way. You know, the bigger the head, the bigger the star. Uh, I've know, heard that actually. Yeah, George Clooney's got the biggest head in Hollywood. It's like eight, eight, eight and a half inch, eight and a half something round circumference. So, how big is your head? How big is my head? You got a pretty big head too. I mean, I've, head. I've got like a bobblehead thing going on. Yeah, the bigger the head, the bigger the star. You know, we're gonna be massive stars then. Uh, all right, yeah. let's go into the Patreon. patreoncom slash Roxy Stryer. You're gonna have to explain this one to me because I don't know what the fuck's happening here. Weston says. How many spy tools slash small animals do you typically store in your facial compartment? And how much would you have to be paid to let Roxy shave it at an MTS live event? 
what the fuck is this thing about spy tools and small animals? Do you pretend that you store those in your beard? Well, I used to hide poison darts <clears throat> in my beard. So that was something I did for a while. Can you but explain just, if you're being a liar it. or not? Are you being no, no, truthful or a liar? I just shaved it. My beard was like this like a week and a half ago. You used to – is that true about the darts? I did pull out a poison dart. You can watch a video of me. I play a character named uh, Sweet Nectar Hector in a video, and he's a poison dart expert that is going to a, a, a rigged poker game. And what he does is, it's actually a blow dart too. So he pulls it out of his beard, puts it in a, like a little bamboo thing and shoots it in a guy's neck. Are you good at darts? Yeah. My brother was a professional dart player in jail. Does that make somebody professional? Well, he was the king of darts in jail. So, I mean. Okay. Um, all right. So how much would you have to pay? Somebody have to pay for me to shave it off? I would have let, let you shave my head. Well, what happened? I didn't really, I didn't realize that people were getting money to do it. You shaved your head for free? Well, yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I think but Christian I, I, and Brett made like $2,000 to shave their head. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to take anybody's money like that. So, but. Yes, I you mean, do. Yes, you yeah, fucking do. I would have got paid five grand to do it. So maybe I'll grow it back and then somebody could shave do it, it again. live. I'll yeah. pay, somebody could, you know, they want to pay a decent amount of money. What about clean here shaving? Shave it what about clean shaving your entire face? I've never took a razor to my face in my whole entire life. I've never. So, how much would how much money? Uh, a lot. A What's lot. the price? Probably twenty five hundred bucks. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Yep. I feel like that's we could definitely find people that would do that to shave your face. We'll see how it goes. Find that and right. find it. We'll do it. All mm -hmm. right, Glenn says hello, Roxy and Tom. Happy Tuesday. By the way, did you even realize it was single de mile today? Uh. Only because some girl told me it was. Other than that, I really didn't know. I mean, I don't really. Am I that girl? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think ultimately what happens is I really don't care what day it is. Not even in, even in a pandemic, I don't care what day it is. Or out of a pandemic, I don't care what day it is. So are you are you drinking every out. day? No, no, no. Oh. I take Monday, I take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and either Thursday or Sunday off. So Friday and Saturday, I go bananas for sure. So you drink? You're drinking about three days a week right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I feel like today, even though it's Tuesday, it's Cinco de Mayo. I feel like you got to have a celebratory tequila or something. Oh, absolutely, I will. Okay. Uh, this is what Glenn said, though. It's great to have you on the show, Tom. Thanks for virtually hanging out with us today. I'm sure the conversation is going to be very interesting, going in some unexpected places, but we'll make it for a highly entertaining episode live at the Roxy. Although you're the manager of the Finstock Exchange, it's still pretty cool that you're a member of the Rockstars band everywhere else. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah. Tom, if you could pick any special ability or power, what would it be? For example, wish granting, cloning yourself, controlling an element like water, fire, air, or earth, or having a healing mm. power for yourself or others, anything like that. Oh, wow. What was the second one? I think it was just naming some. You can think of whatever, any special power, like a superpower. He said, grant, wish granting, cloning yourself. Why? You want to clone yourself? Nah. No, I don't want to clone myself. There's only one me. We don't need another one. It is quite enough. Yeah, one you is what I can open. handle in my life. Yeah, I'm like four people. I'm tripolar anyway, so it's like I'm already three people. So uh, let me think. Most people on the show would, say to fly. I feel like you're you're not most people, though. No, I'd like to be invisible. How come? Are you going to sneaking Tom? Peeking exactly, Tom? What's it called? Exactly, peeping Tom. Peeping. That's exactly, that's exactly what I want to be, yeah. I'd be in everybody's house. But doing like not not creepy, creepy. not the creep not the creep not super creepy stuff. What, like not watching you take a shower, just watching you dry off. You know, because that watch, less creepy. Yeah, watching somebody take a shower is really really creepy. But watching them dry off and they don't know you're there, that I feel like that's equally as creepy. No, it depends how they use the towel. You know, it depends how they. I, I'd like to. I like to see how people use towels when they come out of the shower. And how, how do you use dry. a towel? I don't. I air dry. One thousand percent. You don't use a towel. Yes, I air dry. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you come out? You just go like this. I just somehow it's just yeah. I flap the wings a little bit, you know, give a little, give a little pushback, things like that. Do you have a thing against a towel? I just don't really feel like I need them, you know. I mean, I try to dry off in the shower before you know shut the well, water off. So what if you have to get somewhere? Like you got to get to work and you got to put your clothes on. 
good looking people don't have to rush anywhere. I take my time doing everything I got to do. You know, uh, that's very true. Today I asked you to be on here at 1250. You showed up at 1259. Because I was outside doing the workout. And not using a towel. Definitely not. Did you shower after the workout? No, I'm still sweating from it a little bit. I mean, I don't, I don't shower till late in the day because I do like seven different workouts. So why take a shower after every single workout? You know, plus I'm not seeing anybody anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. You are seeing somebody. What did you call her? Your in-home vagina? <sighs> vagina on tap. I mean, I, there's going to be a lot of girls coming out of this quarantine. Oof. They're going to be in the fruit what, aisle. Bad or good? They're going to be in the fruit aisles uh, handling zucchinis like it's going out of style. They're like, oh, look at that zucchini. Oh, look at that carrot. They're gonna I buy think that's purple. just in your. I think that's just in your head. Well, no. I was talking to a girl the other day. She was like, uh, "You're saying they're ho extra horny coming out of this." Oh, big time, big time. Yeah, but don't you think there's a lot of girls coming out of this who've just gotten laid like five thousand times? Oh yeah, but they want more. They can't get enough of it. So you got to look at it this way. There's going to be a lot of people coming out of this thing like raging lunatics, especially, you know, if you're if you're sitting in a in a bar, you know, for the first time, you got to always you always do the brush up against. You know, that's what I'm going to miss the most, the brush up. You know, when you, if I was single, you know, when you let a girl know that you're into her, it's kind of like the, like the, the brush up. She's at the bar. You're at the bar. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, of course. It's the brush up and I don't wear any underwear anymore. So it's like the brush up's the real deal now. So, so you mentioned going, Oh my God. You, mentioned, you don't wear any underwear. No. <clears throat> Why wow. would I wear underwear? Like I said, during this quarantine, I'm learning what I don't need. And I, what I hate need. not wearing underwear. I well, hate girl, it's it. It's hard for girls to do it. You know, it's hard. I because said this when other stuff happening down there. Do you remember Trisha Hirschberger? You know who that is? Yeah, Trisha Hirschberger. Yeah. I when she came on the show, I t said this to her. She's a blonde, right? No, no, she's brunette. She was at she was source fed before Mod went to source fed. Brunette, geeky, beautiful. Oh tiny, yeah, 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 yeah. Trisha, um, Trisha Hirschberger. Super nerdy. But she, anyway, she came on and I told her that I, the reason I feel like I need to wear underwear is like, I'm scared my like organs are going to fall out. And this is the dumbest shit I've ever said, but like, it just feels like there needs to be something there in case like shit falls out of me. Like it like feels like an open hole. Like your uterus? I don't know. I just get like really afraid. The girl, like, I, know, the I, girl mean, I know, her uterus fell out. What do you mean? She was dating some Lakers and she was just getting drilled. And her uterus fell out. We were going to the beach and she was making sandwiches and she's like, I'm, I got to go to the doctor. I'm like, why? She's like, I feel like my, my vagina is going to fall out. And I was like, oh man, she wasn't sick. She was just getting, she was just getting destroyed. You know? So I don't think it actually like came out. I think it was misplaced. I think she said it was like, like a borderline history. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's not like uh, the way I say it, it sounds like I have like a fucking gaping hole down there. I have, that's not the situation. I just, am like scared because it feels like there's a hole in your body. Wouldn't you think something would come out of it? Yeah. Well, it does a baby. <laughs> Babies come out of it. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. Right. I would get a C-section if I were you. I have if three pregnant, pregnant friends right now. I cannot. Really? Yeah, three pregnant friends right now. And Grandma. my friends who have had babies have said that their vaginas never went back. Just never, ever. They got to go to the doctor for that. You can get the labia reconstruction. Yeah, you can, but it doesn't say it holds all the time because, like, it tears. Um, yeah, of course it tears. Yeah, that's the I think her. I think her diagnosis was, uh, I think she got, her, her something got shifted. Like something was shifted. I have something shifted too, actually. I have a low set cervix. I don't really know how that affects anything or what it means, but you my my gyno told me to look out for my low set cervix, whatever the fuck that is. I told you it's a high set or low set. Low uh, High set means you're more prone to camel toe. A low set means you're not as prone to camel toe. So maybe is that what he was trying to get at? Yeah, that must be. That must yeah. be the, the lesson I was supposed to learn. Douglas Emmett says... Hey there, Mr. Dagnino. It's great to have the best Schmodown manager on the show, mm -hmm. finally. Oh, daggers yeah, to my yeah. heart. I, I loved you on Schmo's No Show, and I was wondering, uh, what are your favorite and least favorite moments from your time on the show? And also, when did this feud start with Roxy? Um, okay, so your favorite and least favorite Schmo's No Show. I feel like you don't remember jack shit. Do you, do you have favorite and least favorite moments? Yeah, of course. I mean, I remember everything. I, my favorite moments was when we could actually say and do whatever we felt like it. Um, you you mean know, before society was like, no, fuck that. 
yeah, before the agenda came in, you know, it's, uh, I think, uh, you know, hopefully I think we're going to, after this kind of thing, people are going to realize that you only live once and you can say and do whatever you feel like it again. Um, I, I think, uh, I think it's going to be a lot less, uh, criticism going forward here. You know, people are dying. That's, that's a hell of a lot more important than, uh, you know, calling somebody a name or, you know, objectifying, uh, an Instagram model or something like that. So here, here's, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, the, one of the best moments, obviously the trial of JTE, anything in the toad hop network when I first came out with Tiffany was just amazing stuff. Um, beating top 10, uh, me and JTE beating top 10. Uh, which was fantastic. Uh, you know, I came up with the with the the manuscript uh, answer. I can't believe like Roca and Nost and JTE didn't even know that. I, was I in, don't even uh, remember that. You guys beat top 10? Yeah, me and JTE beat top 10. We came in as priest and wiped the what, floor. What year was this? What uh, or what? This was like season two of the Schmodown. Not even. I don't even two. remember that. Wow. It was one of the best. Well, you weren't even around yet. It wasn't that many. Yes, I was. Fuck off. Oh, yeah. You were in After Buzz with us, but you weren't playing. You know. No, but I was calling things on the desk. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, you were. Well, yeah, it was me. It was, I think it was Tiffany McCuga and Christian doing uh, that one. And we were playing pretty well. And, you know, that's Ro Roca and Nose weren't the Roca and Nose that you saw like later on when people started, yeah, taking, yeah, of course. Very, people started taking the game very, very seriously. Um, that was pretty amazing stuff. The Thursday shows used to be amazing, you know. Uh, over in uh, the first, uh, in the first collider uh, facility, we used to still go wild, and uh, then it got tame. Then we started bringing, I don't know, they started bringing some fucking clowns on Thursday nights, and it ruined the whole show. And that was who? It. Whoever I don't even know who they were, to be honest with you. I uh, don't even remember what you're talking about. They, they what brought people in our space on, or legit like it was? You just didn't like the people. Uh, y no, yeah, I thought I thought the show was watered down. You know, it, it, it was it was a show. You it was a shell of itself. You have people in this space you don't like? Uh, no, no. I I've actually, no I'll be honest. I've never, ever heard you dislike somebody. I don't dislike anybody. I don't have time to not like somebody. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with their views sometimes, but I mean, that's them. They don't, they ain't changing my life. They ain't, they ain't, you know, they ain't doing anything I care about. So but even when there's been like feuds of people not liking you, I've never heard you say something bad about somebody else. No, I never do. equally bad things about everybody. Like, sure, but I mean, I never, I never personally attack somebody. No, uh, and it's I think, not your bag. No, it's not. And I think, you know, what was happening early on in the Schmodown, uh, people who were the heels didn't understand like how to not personally attack somebody. That's why I think a lot of those guys were like almost came to blows uh, because you know they'd be like, you know, they bring like people's mothers and this, that, and the other thing into it. I'm like, that's not the way you trash talk. That's not the way, you know, yeah, you call somebody a loser, but that's just like, you know, you're calling them a loser in the game, not a loser in life. You're not like, oh yeah, you work fucking, uh, you know, wherever and you're a loser. That's not the case. But I mean, some people were going a little overboard and, you know, you had to talk Christian off the ledge with some guys. I'm like, you better get over there because these guys were like, not, this is serious, you know, and that, yeah. would, that would happen sometimes and which was not a good thing, but very look, true. Yeah. But then you, you got to look at it this way. I think. Uh, people have learned how to, how to come to grips with that. Uh, they're acting. You think better. so? Yeah. Well, a lot better. Look, there's still people who, ha who, who have a lot of, uh, you know, chips on their shoulder in this kind of, uh, For sure. kind of game and they take it real, real seriously. And they, and they should, because it technically is, it, it's a, it's a business. It's a sport. You know, there's money on the line. There's reputations on the line. I totally get it. Um, what do you think we should do? I saw that Christian put up that poll about should we finish digitally or should we wait to do this? Uh, uh, should we close out season seven and pick up season eight next year? What do you think if it comes down to that? Um, I think what you're going to see is within. <sighs> no, not what you think we're going to see. What do you think if you were if you were the commissioner? No, I, I, no we 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 continue. We continue this uh, digitally. You mean I don't think we have to continue it digitally just yet. But if uh, those are the options, if that's what it comes to, because right now we're supposed to be yeah. out May 15th and then yeah. maybe we're going to be able to film. Who knows? But if the options are, because we don't know what the government's going to say about how many people can be in one room or whatever. So if the mm -hmm. options are either we fi finish this digitally or we wait until 2021 to pick mm -hmm. up season eight, what do you yeah. think? Um, I think we do whatever it takes to film this year. 
Um, so if we have to go digital, you have to go digital. Right. Because like, you know, a lot of things it's out of sight, out of mind. And this is a great community and they're not going to forget about it. But I mean, the way, and I think that was one of the last matches we taped the other day. I don't think there's anything else on in the chamber to put out. Um, but if we do get the go ahead and to get into a studio again, I don't think there's anything stopping us from filming a ton in a couple of days obviously you know the masks and and gloves and not many people are gonna have to be there i say maybe you know we might have to cut out some of the pre and post interviews uh but i can't see no 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 reason why christian and mark can't sit on the desk six feet away from competitors uh will we lose some of the theatrics i think absolutely but the majority of people here are for you know they want this they need this uh there's a lot of people in their home that are, aren't going to go back to work for a while. And they, they live Schmodown, you know, uh, you know, live and breathe it. And it's our duty to give it to them. It's like the same thing with baseball and, you know, in sports and things like that. I miss yeah, baseball. Yeah, but they don't have the opportunity to do that. I mean, they can do it with no audience, but they. Sure. But we, don't need, hmm. we don't need the audience either. I mean. How many drinks do you have? This is uh, baking soda. Lemon. No, no, be fucking honest with me right now. There's baking soda, lemon, and uh, honey that I use to alkaline my body. And, and this is, there's no water in it? Yeah, there's hot water. Oh. But no, and there's two shakes that I drink. Baking soda, lemon, honey, and hot water. What's yes. the what's the baking soda for? Oh, it's alkaline. It'll kill it kills anything in your body. It kills anything bad in your body. Like if you have stage four cancer and you drink it, it's gone. I can't. At least I that's what I believe. At least, all right, so at least it's what I believe in. I can't if you believe it. You believe in that. If you believe all right. It, all right. All right. Anti vaccinating guy. I'm not anti vaccination guy, but I'm saying there's a lot of things that can really work. So this is you the promise kind of me there's actual baking soda in there. Absolutely, it's preventative maintenance. See, when I'm when I started this quarantine, I'm like, and I was always a healthy guy, but it's like now it's just like I drink lemons every day, baking soda, raw honey. Oil of oregano for Jake uh, Acavetta. Um, I do um, zinc, potassium. Yeah, I do zinc. I do magnesium. a lot of those things too. All but I don't. Things. I don't do baking soda though. Do baking soda, but don't put that much in it. It's really good stuff. I don't me. fucking know. I yeah. don't know about that. All right, uh, Robert McNeil says, "Roxy, love all you do. So happy you finished your Lego. I've been building a fucking Lego set for like two months. Really? I'm a slow but on shit like, on like Twitch or something." No, here on the show. I, really? Two days a week, I, I on purpose was not booking guests so I could build my Legos. And mm -hmm. I finally finished my friend's Lego set. It's okay. I like it a lot. It, it's cool, but like not, I don't know. Some things are a little wonky about it. But anyway, he says, uh, as for your guest and second best manager, Tom, yeah. What is it that you actually do for a living? Uh, and where did you create your character from? Okay, so let's break this down. Tom. It's such a good question, Robert. Tom, what do you do for a living? Me? That's what I, I was saying. A, what do you mean you? What the fuck do you mean you? I, I am a vendor. I I have a walkie-talkie business, amongst other things. Look, I, I have them right I here. Am, I am a vendor. I have walkie, I have walkie So, right But Tom, this is new. This is a new business that this you started this past yeah. year. Yes. Um, and you're crushing it doing it actually, yeah. uh, yeah. because you, so you rent them to film and TV sets that mm -hmm. need a ton of walkies to communicate on set. But yes. I feel like since I've known you, mm -hmm. you've had like 75 jobs. I mean, what yeah. was the thing? There was one that you were running scripts from people back and forth, like something like that. They're bringing, I don't know, just stories about driving. Yeah, look, like, I just, uh, or I just like rented, that? I just rented walkies again to this guy. Don't show his phone number, Tom. He, he's a good guy. Nobody knows him. He's 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 a very old man. You don't want to call him. But uh, anyway, he's a really nice guy. But anyway, that being Wait, said, you're you're able cool. to rent some of them during this time. Yeah, they do. Uh, they go up to the mountains and shoot like uh, they're trying to shoot like a little documentary. It's like five guys. You know? Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, but, no, I mean, look, I've, I've worked in the production. I've worked, I've been an actor. I've been, a, you know, I'm a writer. I've sold TV shows. I've produced things. I've uh, worked at the Schmodown. I um, owned a couple of like little, uh, little storefronts. And Has and, it always been like that with you? Like, are you a little bit this, a little bit that always? Yeah. I mean, I never worked a day in my life in high school. 
uh, but I always had money. I was a gambler. I was a, a fencer, you know, not like fencing, but like I, I used to fence like, uh, you know, merchandise from people who worked in malls and somehow it would land at my house and then I would sell it and then kickbacks and things like that. You know, I'm better at doing illegal things than I am legal things. Did you ever work in an office? Uh, well, I worked in a production office, but I mean, I never really was, I never really was, was there when I live next door to you or close to you guys. I fucking miss that. I got to say when, when you Makuga and I lived in that triangle, that was yeah. the best. Oh my God. That was the nuts. best. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It was so good. We lived all within a block of each other. Well, we were so, all sing I was pretty much all single, and I was yeah. a fucking animal. Yeah, it was amazing. It was, we had those bars really right on Santa Monica that were great. Yeah, it was really bad. That was fucking awesome. I used to get to Tinder dates. I used to take Tinder dates always to Jones's. But what I would do is I'd, I'd call the date at 8 o'clock and get there at 7 and drink like four or five vodka sodas. And then I'd act like I wasn't drinking anything. So just to, to didn't think I was like a raging alcoholic. That is so fucked up. Why? Why did you want to fool them? I wasn't fooling anybody. I just like to drink. You were. You're fooling them. Just drink oh, in front of them or don't I, drink. Oh, no. I had more when they were there, too. Oh, I thought you just didn't want them to know you were drinking. No, I just didn't want to know I was drinking that much. All right. It's a little yeah. better, I guess. Yeah. Uh, wait, but what were you, you were just saying? Why did you start with when we lived near each other? What that had to do with working? Yeah, that's when I was working in that office. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but I'd go in anytime I felt like it. I mean, I was like sort of the like creative exec slash like do everything guy. And uh, it was great, you know, for a long time. I worked there for like eight years. Do you ever work at a bar? No, I've never done any retail in the whole entire life. Any kind of retail or any kind of bar, nothing like that. Uh, I went to go work. All my buddies were getting hired at Wendy's when we were like 15 or 16 or something like that. And uh, I never, I didn't want to shave. And the guy was like, well, I'm not going to hire you if you're not shaving. I go, you got a beard. You got a beard. He's like, I'm the manager. I go, it doesn't really make a difference. I go, you're contradicting yourself, contradicting yourself here. This is bullshit. And he's like, you're not going to get hired. I'm like, good. I don't want to get hired. And then I just went on, you know, back to, uh, is back to uh, selling and, you know, stolen merchandise and things like that in high school. Stick it to the man. You do you, right. Tom. Right. Uh, shout out to NFL Caleb. Appreciate you. Going back into these questions for you, the second part of that was where did you create your character from? Uh, I'm guessing Bob Finstock. By the way, Jake Yacovetta, who makes my overlays, was like, what the fuck is this guy's Instagram handle? Oh, it's that little Bobby and Juice. I know. I know what it was, but you have like 17 names. I do. It's hard to find you. I'm going under the name Eddie Gerlach now, too. What is that? It's like my kind of like, it's kind of like my undercover name. Eddie Gerlach? Eddie Gerlach, yeah. Well, I've been right. reading this book too. It's really good. What is it? Midnight Grind? Yeah. A tribute to explanation. I know exploitation, no, exploitation films, eighties and beyond. It's uh, who is the who is the woman's breasts on the cover? Who is it? We don't uh, know. It looks. It might be Seika. Seika, the old porn star. I don't know Seika. Yeah. All right, whatever. It was a really big porn star in the 70s. So that's how you got your character. That's where you got your character from. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, like I said, the Finstock character is not too much different than I am with a mask on. But when I do with when I throw the mask on, there is an extra sense of like, kind of like power. Like I feel like I have like I'm super powerful when. Well, you can't get in trouble for saying shit because it's not you. It's Finstock. That's technically right. That's technically right. <laughs> and that's what I used to tell these guys. I'm like, I'm not really saying it. They're like, yeah, you are. I'm like, but um, I'm like, but no, no, I'm not. You know? Oh my God. It's just such a ridiculous specimen. Garth McMurray says, Tom, when are you and Kaiser going to start your own weekly live stream called Managing Your Life, where you both read super chat questions and give life advice while you both tell wild stories from your life? Well, it's actually a good question because Tom, I well, know that you're working on some stuff right now. Yes, I am. Uh, we're gonna have a big announcement tomorrow. Uh, you know, I you, and, you and Kaiser both? Uh Kaiser's involved he, he's involved in some capacity yes um but this is something that needs to be done uh the world needs uh truth serum right now and i'm the truth serum deliverer so what's oh gonna boy. happen yeah oh so boy yeah so what's gonna happen is i'm gonna have a lot of people on like you and uh you know whoever else i can get on in the in the female kind of like uh gender to sit back and talk some really good stuff here. I have a lot of Did girls. Did you have a hard time phrasing that just now? 
Well, I, I was going to try to figure out what else to say, but gender is the, is the way to In go. In the female gender, okay. Right. So I got yeah. a bunch of people that I used to work with that really want to come on that are not going to pull punches. Stratton? So, uh, she might come on. She might come on. We have a lot of good time. I mean, I, 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 does she have a computer? I'm not really sure. I don't even not know. Not really idea. technologically yeah. advanced. She's like one of the most probably I know. least technologically advanced girls I, I know. know. And she also is one of those, has a uh, nail polish over her computer camera. Oh, person. really? But yeah, yeah, totally. I got this little cool thing that goes back and forth. It's actually nice. I had one of those for a little bit too. I like that, but um, it snapped off. That was I a great know. fucking story. How did it snap off? What were you doing? A little, little extra curly there? No, I forget which. I got it at some junket, like either Spider Man or something. So it was like kind of rinky. Um, and I, I really don't. Every time I closed my computer, it kind of cracked a little bit. Right. And then it just fucking whatever. Who who gives a shit? It doesn't no, matter. No. But you've got your thing coming up. Um, obviously I'll come on. I feel like you'll yeah. you've got a lot of female gender people that will come on. Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, look, if they want to dance with the devil here. We could do that. But look, it's only speaking truth. But it also is, you know, there's going to be question and answers. There's going to be a lot of different things. There's going to be a big live stream tomorrow to announce what we're doing. Um, Where this, are you doing the live stream tomorrow? On StreamYard. Uh, no, no. The, where? Whose channel? Uh, mine. What is it? I'm trying to let you plug. Where can they follow it? To it's go not, well, you're going to find it uh, right now. You could, if you, if everybody can go, just start following the Finstock Exchange. The uh, Twitter? The, no, the Finstock Exchange YouTube channel. Oh, okay. People need to follow that because there's going to be big surprises on that tomorrow. Jake, regarding can you, a lot of can community. you find it so I can throw it up in here so people can go subscribe to it? Yes, because the Finstock Exchange, as of right now, is a fan is a fan orientated uh, podcast for the Exchange, ran by Larry Payne and a couple of other guys. Uh, Danny and Josh and, uh, you know, James and a couple other guys who were great guys. And, uh, Larry approached me with a great idea and, uh, I think it's fantastic. I'm hitting and subscribe right now. Yeah, All right. So it, it's literally this one. It's, this is the, it's the fan yeah. site. Yes. Correct. That's, that's where you're making your announcement tomorrow. Yes. It's okay. going, there's going to be a lot of changes to that. So we're going to bank off what the subscribers are now and pump them harder. And then we're going to, we're going to do some. Really All right. So we're, we're at 250. Now we're at 258. Let's try yeah. to get, let's try to at least get to 300 by the end of this guy's easy to that do. Nice. Thank yeah. you, Jake, for throwing this in there. Thank you, Jake. Uh, we're going to try to, I'm going to go get, subscribe. Him a, I'm gonna get him a free bottle of oil or oregano. Cause I'm going to the store later. I'm going to the Korean grocer. He doesn't want your oil of yeah, oregano. I'm telling you, he does. He already he declared does. himself a rock star. He stepped to you. No, the oh oil God. of oregano is something that's fantastic. Look, I'm going to do. I'm going to be doing health shows. I'm going to be doing sports shows. I'm going to be doing sex shows. I'm going to be doing. What is uh, a sex show? Like you're going to have sex on air? No, well, I mean, I know a bunch of porn stars, so we're going to like talk a lot of stuff like that. Like, and we're, and we're going to make you know, people need to start understanding to become to get really familiar with their bodies. There's a lot of women who just are not familiar with their bodies. How are you going to get a woman familiar with her body? Well, because I'm going to have people who describe it. So I work. I know a lot of people at the pleasure chest down by where we used to live. You know what a pleasure chest is, right? Yeah, of course. I love the pleasure chest. So do I. Well, they run a bunch of classes, right? They do a great job there. I got to say. Yeah, they do. And it's very cool. But they teach women how to do certain things that men like, or and they need to teach men how to do things that women like. You know, say if a guy doesn't really know how to give like oral sex to a woman, I'm going to have some uh, expert on here so he can teach it and then maybe have like a little like kind of fake like plastic vagina and somebody can really go to town on it and try to figure out and show people who have, you know, who've never maybe seen one in, in, in life, how to go back down and, you know, make it work. You know, I do know. We'll see how that goes for you. I'm kind of nervous about it. Uh, guys, don't forget to go subscribe. Let me know when you do get a shout out. Uh, definitely people are doing it right now who haven't told me yet because the numbers are going up. We're at 270 good. right now. So that's Ooh, great. Good. Yeah, uh, I mean, keep it going, to, guys. Try to get to a thousand. I mean, we're going to do some really, really fun. Shout stuff. out to Matt Link. Yeah, a hundred percent. Ten thousand and a hundred thousand, and then I'll take the show on the road. But we're, you know, we're planning on doing so many different things: morning shows, late night shows, uh, you know, just uh, impromptu things, uh, just to get it out there. Because it's like you never know what's going to happen going forward in this kind of pandemic. When what's going to happen or when it's going to end? Nobody really knows. So yeah, that's true. It's a, it's a really interesting thing, but. To segue back to what I think we, you know, and how we segue off and, you know, which is I'm um, pretty good at is uh, basically, yeah, I think we should. You segue king. Oh, yeah. The big, I'm, I'm like a, 
an octopus. I'm a Segway octopus. Kaiser Zose, uh, which is like Kaiser Sose, and uh, Glenn Caesar. Thanks for subscribing. Keep going, oh, Tom. Yeah. So basically, um, yes. To answer your question earlier, we should definitely film, uh, continue on with season seven of the Schmodown. No questions asked. There's too much riding on it. There's too much stuff going on. Uh, you don't. You know. You want to. You don't want to waste the Tom, We had already. We already fucking moved past that. We were already on. Remember, Garth asked when you were going to do your own weekly show. We weren't even on that question anymore. You were yeah, answering I, the question. I just wanted to clarify it. Anyway, oh, uh, yeah, the weekly show is going to happen very soon, and I'm counting on a lot of people to do to 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 watch and get out there and make sure that uh, this is the most watched channel on the internet. Uh, and that's what that's what the goal is here. The um, most watched channel on the internet. So what? That's PewDiePie has that right now, right? You want to be yeah. him? Yeah, that guy's a clown. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> What's he do? Just like, what does he do? Like comment on video? I don't even actually really know. You guys tell us. All right, we have more questions for you, Tom. So we'll see mm -hmm. how you answer these. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Weston Ira says, Records don't show everything. Roxy is the legit MVM, most valuable manager. And don't you forget it. Whoever said otherwise in that other stream lab. Anyway, Dagnino, if you had a Schmodown class, what would it be? Oh, no. Uh, a Schmodown class? Yeah. Like, meaning, like, if I had to teach one? Uh, yeah, I guess if you were a class teacher for Schmodown. Uh, we've, ta we've talked a lot about on this show how like some people don't know how to cut a promo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay, you know. fine. Uh, I would. I think a lot of people in the Schmodown lack style. I would. I mean, not fashion saying wise, like, you mean? Yeah, fashion wise, absolutely. I see people sometimes, and I'm like, why? You know, somebody needs to dress you, and somebody needs to. I also think somebody needs to. It'd be like it'd be almost like a a, a personality building class. And a persona building class rather than a, a, a you know a movie trivia schmodown class. Yeah, you're or, focusing you know, on character. Right. More character work. Like I said before, like Robert Parker's name shouldn't be Spider. It should be the sorcerer. Robert the Sorcerer Parker. Or look at this guy. Um, that's kind of good because he's also good with magic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Spider is just like eh, everybody's name's Spider. You know, Jake Spider. Is, it? is everybody's Spider, name Spider? Spider-Man, whatever. I think if you go sorcerer, you win. And then, you know, I don't, I like his persona too, but I would go to the sorcerer. So he, let me tell you a little story. So when we got the barbarian, you know, yeah. who, by the way, shout out. I mean, we've been giving him oh, so yeah. much love this week, but shout out to Craig right now. I mean, yeah, just our, I'm sure you too, our hearts are fucking with him hardcore right now. Oof, what a, what a, what a sad thing. You know, fucking brutal. I, 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 brutal. Brutal. But I don't want to dwell on that because yeah. he's that guy and we're going to praise him here. Um, you know, when he came in, he was, you know, he was just, you know, had a t-shirt on, long hair. He had it. And some people do have it. They just need to be pushed over the edge. Yeah, so yeah. Chris was like, we got to get this guy a persona. I'm like, leave it up to me. So my girlfriend came home the one day. It was freezing outside. And she had this big coat on with this big fur thing on it. And I didn't even say, hi, babe. How you In doing? LA? Yeah. It was, what, what are you talking about? It was freezing, freezing? In, in January. Freezing in December and January. So okay. talking 45 degrees, maybe less. So anyway. I hang out in different places than you do. So anyway, um, that's she comes very home, true. She comes home and didn't say any. I didn't say anything to her. Like I was just like, "Hey, look, um, where did you, where did you get that? And and is it removable from the jacket?" And she's like, "Yeah." She's like, "I don't know. It was in my closet. I think it's my mom's old jacket." I'm like, "All right, cool." So the next day, I took the you know the little the little raccoon slash thing off it. Yeah, yeah. And she, you know that she's never seen it again. He so calls then, it a chinchilla. It's a it is you know show. you know the the Liberia. people the people call it Elvis. Have you heard that? Well, yeah, we made the name up. So basically, when I gave it to Barbarian, Christian's like, "You have something for him?" I'm like, "Yeah, trust me, I got something." So I'm like, "Hey, look, I I put it out in my bag. I'm like, I want you to wear this, you know, like as a as like a kind of like yeah yeah hiking type thing, right?" So, uh, but then he was like, he just put it on the side and started petting it, and I go, "Wow, that's pretty great." And he's, I'm like, "Yeah, just leave it there." And I go, he's like, "I can talk to it." I'm like, "Yeah, talk to it." I was like, act, like I'll converse with it. Like you're having, it's giving you answers. Like it's your magic powers. Oh my fucking oh, God. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to call it Elvis. I go, see, we just built a character. So yes, your answer is I would build personas rather than build uh, just a trivia beast. Cause I'm not going to mm -hmm. do that. Uh, everybody don't, again, 
telling people still to subscribe. We're at 276. We definitely can get to 300 easy, guys. Oh, Keep easily. on going. Keep, Not even a question. Subscribe, no question. Mm -hmm. uh, win a goldfish here. It says best podcast from the best faction. Uh, I'm I'm going to say he's talking about me, but really, it feels like with the name win a goldfish, he's probably talking about you. Jake, thanks for putting this up. I'm going to leave it here for a second. Uh, let's go back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Paul Denuzio says, Hey, Tom, I hear there is a shortage of oil of oregano. Just want to make sure you're stocked up. By the way, breaking news, IG Torney coming digitally per Christian. Um, yeah, I heard that he made that announcement today. Uh, somebody wrote that in the chat earlier. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm a little nervous, but I don't know what our other options are. True. So uh, it just is what it is right now, well, you know? I mean, like I said, with nothing in the chamber filmed, you got to have something to keep the train going. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's out of sight, out of mind, you know? And it's like I said, I feel sorry for like people who are like just starting into, just starting to like see somebody in their relationship and getting close to having sex with them. And then the pandemic hits and now they got to start all over again. You know? So it's like, especially if you're in like a, in, in, in a new starting relationship. Yeah. It, that's tough. That is tough. Probably, Look, at you window. Look at you. Yeah. I appreciate that side of you when you care, yeah. when you give a shit. It's very I do nice. Care. Look, I got Carl here. He's a, uh, Oh he's my god! In a new episode, in a season two episode, he's uh, in jail. How come you haven't asked me to do any other voices? Because we're currently filming right now. We're gonna do voices soon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Weston says, "Have either of you managers, one with a band, the other with a cult, gotten into legal trouble for something unusual, like for not wearing a shirt?" Tom, have you ever gotten into legal trouble? <laughs> you ever had the FBI walk knocking on your door? Try that one on for size. Have you? Oh yeah. What happened? Sure. Uh, I don't know. Somebody said I did something, but I didn't do it. And then, you know, FBI came knocking at my door and, you know, uh, I'll tell you what, if you ever, uh, don't ever, uh, look through your peephole and see windbreakers with the, with the yellow lettering on it. It's not the coolest thing in the world. Um, I'm like, it's like, I follow what rappers do too. Like, I'm not scared of the cops. I'm not scared of like, you know, librarians or anybody with like, any why would you be scared of librarians? Well, you ever see that Seinfeld episode with Bookman? He was scary. Yeah. So, so the way you look at it is, but uh, only the feds I fear. But honestly, um, they were there. I had a big night of drinking. We were over at the Arm Armani Exchange party that night. Mm -hmm. And it was like just right after the holidays. It was like Oscar season and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, sure. I looked through the peephole. It was like seven in the morning. And my buddy DJ was supposed to come over and play tennis with me. So I'm like, this fucking guy is so punctual. But he's like really early this time. And he was supposed to be like 745 or something. It was only seven. And I was going to tell him not to come anyway because I was shit cocked. But anyway, uh, I look, you know, when you look through the peephole and see three FBI agents out there, um, it's not the coolest thing in the world. So my buddy was like a next door neighbor who lived right next door to me, opened the door and didn't just shut it right away because he knew it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to end well. So, uh, I had my Stallone mug and I was, uh, in, uh, and I was wearing underwear at the time. I had a pair of bikini briefs and, um, basically what happened was, uh, I was like, do you want to come in? Are you here to arrest me? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, cool. What do you, you want to talk or something like that? They're like, yeah, we just want to talk. I'm like, all right, cool. I was like, I don't really want you coming to my house. So let's go talk and talk in the park. So we sat on one of the benches by your house over there. And, uh, that's when you lived there. Yeah, 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 for sure. And then they went there and, uh, we, they just asked me a bunch of questions that, uh, that, that were pertaining to something that I didn't do. So it, uh, I got, I got off. Would I mean, you tell I me if you did? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I would, but I didn't, I didn't do anything. I never do anything bad like that bad. Not for the FBI to be at my door. That's 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 for sure. Oh my god! I mean, things went down. It was what it was. Uh, they, I think they, it was a case of mistaken identity because they thought I was somebody that I wasn't. Not mistaken identity, meaning it was me, Tom Dagnino. Just a mistaken identity that they thought I was going to be somebody else, but I wasn't. If you dig what I'm saying, this is a sketchy story. Well, basically, what I'm saying is they were looking for me to do something that I don't do. We just rat on people. And so you just didn't. I didn't because I didn't know who did it either. I just didn't know anything. But I wasn't going to say if I did know who did it because I was like, look, you got the wrong guy. I don't fucking they're like, know. No, you're, they're they're like, you're another right guy. They're like, you're Tom Dagnino, right? I'm like, yeah. They're like, no, we got the right guy. I'm like, no, you got the wrong guy. 
You're like, I'm Bobby Gucci. Well, Bobby yeah, I, Gucci. I don't think I was Gucci yet. I was thinking I was in stock. But there was a lot of Russians down at the park, as you know, they were working yeah. on the yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw me and walking with, chess and stuff. They saw me walking with the FBI and they all got up and just took off. <laughs> they were like, they were like, Oh my god. Oh, That's they're, all, funny. they're all they're all Guys, like, Anyway. Two, 284. We're at 284. Keep it Ooh, going. Look at, look at the three. Keep on going. Yeah, for sure. Uh, staying in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Glenn always likes to ask our guests food related questions. So uh, here's a list of four Let's of them, it. Tom. Number one, <laughs> what's your favorite meal to have when you're feeling down? Uh, Are you ever fucking feeling down? No, now? that's the thing. I never really feel down. I mean, I only eat two uh, meals a day. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have these protein shakes. I'll do, uh, about a handful of raw Brazilian nuts in the midday because those have uh, antivirus properties. No, in them. none of this is good. When you're feeling down, like say something. Like, I know you don't feel down, down, but maybe you're feeling just like a little. Maybe under like the fish, fish sticks and macaroni and cheese because it brings me. It brings me back to my childhood. Yeah, like, say, that was the most I, real. I, that was yeah. the most real thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> well, it's true. I'm going to be realer on the show now. It's like. You know, on the on on the show is there's going to be a lot of like uh, insight, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start really uh, tutoring people who who need help. You know, like I'm gonna look, I'm gonna act as a psychologist. Well, when I got started to get to actually know like your f familial history and your childhood stories and like just things about you, I started to understand you so much more, Tom. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I agree but with I that. feel like not everybody understands or knows you, so you you have to be real and open about it. Yeah, I mean, people think I'm like this, like, you know, misogynistic, uh, you know, sexually perverted fucking weasel, but that's obviously not the case. <laughs> You're smiling thing now. Okay, yeah. there's still three more. Favorite breakfast food? Uh, you know, I was a, I ate cereal for years and years and years, uh, at, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, I would basically say cookie crisp cereal was my favorite of all time. Also cocoa pebbles. Very good, but I don't, I don't right. touch it anymore. It's just sugar. It's just yeah. too much sugar. sugar is not good for you. Well, then you're going to love this next one. Favorite dessert. Uh, homemade chocolate chip cookies that I make. Hey, chocolate chip cookies are my favorite dessert. I made I, the yeah, most I, incredible one this week. I got stuff over here. These are the best chocolate chip cookies known to man. I'm gonna I'm gonna sell them on the on the on the websites. We should go trade these. I'll make you one, you make me one. Okay. Only no no no. Okay, yeah, let's do it. What what the fuck were you gonna say? I said we could trade them, but you'll have to wear a bikini and I'll wear uh bikini briefs. Like we'll trade cookies like half naked. That'd you have to just wear your hat on your penis. And you have to Ooh, film yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to film yours. And I don't. I might hit you. I might hit you. Uh, I might, I might hit okay. you at a six foot distance. Glenn's fourth one favorite late night snack. Do you late night snack? No. Well, yeah, but not on that type of stuff. And let me think here. Uh, I would, I would say, um, a cookie, cookies. I mean, that's I, I, I have a I have a weakness for chocolate chip cookies. I mean, I'll, uh, I'm not saying I get up in the morning and like under my bed there's like a you know a Tupperware thing with cookies in it. So I don't do that. Why would there be a Tupperware under your bed in the morning? Well, in the night, because some people don't like getting out of bed. I don't. I know. Oh a lot my of people, god, a that's lot of next level. I know a lot of people with food under their bed. Christian no was no fucking big, way. Christian was a big food under his bed guy. The one Wait, time I speaking of Christian, he's in here right now. So please clarify, Christian, uh, because I need to know what do you keep under your bed? Uh, must not know. now. He used to. I want to know what the fuck. He, I didn't. I've never met somebody who kept food under their bed. That's fucking psycho. I don't even uh, know if he knew he was there. Shmoda Entertainment Network says. Have you heard the news about the IG tourney and who will be your two competitors that you want in it? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Um, heard the news, heard that you announced it. Didn't hear about the two competitor part of it. Tom, do you know what you're doing? Um, I No, I think it's in its infancy, infancy here. He, he called me. I got to call him back. I can only deal with that guy once a week, you know. You, he says you're making up the shit about the food <laughs> under your bed. Did you no, just make it up? No, it was in the Blackburn house. It was like a tuna fish sandwich, like six months under his bed. A tuna fish sandwich? Are you on so. crack? I think so. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. No way. No fucking yeah. way. Yeah, he's a lunatic. Um, for me, I feel like it's pretty 
uh, clear what I'm going to do for two people. I've already talked to my guys. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. Damon is making a name for himself in this space mm-hmm. and wants to be, he calls you a moron, and wants to be involved uh, <laughs> more and more. And he's been doing such an amazing job, actually, yeah. during this quarantine, really buckling down and studying. Um, and Molly's been such a great support for that, too. Um, and then Jared Haben, who loves being an IG um, and is somebody who wants to compete in the tourney. I think also he's somebody who's used to doing a million things and during quarantine has been like going a little stir crazy. So I'm excited to get him involved too. Uh, yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a, those guys are great competitors. I mean, look, you got a lot of work. Yeah, awesome. for you. I mean, this is the, a lot of people, uh, inner geek them is the way to catch up. Um, you know, Kaiser needs a lot of help with uh, from his inner geekdom. You need a lot of help with your inner geekdom characters. I mean, not only I mean, because look, I mean, Kaiser Kaiser's team is not very strong other than IG. You know, your team has lost a couple of really hard matches. Yeah. Uh, you know, your, your A plus guys that, you know, now you got to go to your second tier people that can sit here and try to, you know, get you to, to get you to catch up a little bit. You know, Swag in the Den have some really good solid teams and they had some really clutch wins and that's why they're you know tied for second place right now um and second place yeah i think it's it's tough though to really identify which teams are where teams are because of what's happened in this quarantine Mm -hmm. like it is true but it's hard because there's so many players also like my top tier guys like you said it's not like they got annihilated um they were in incredible matches and they had shitty spins and that happens all the time. You know, if you're going to spin opponent's choice and they're going to spin spinner's choice, Mm -hmm. then that's just going to be what it is. Um, And so I, but because of everything, it's not like they've had another chance. Um, And that's not just my guys. That's a lot of the people. I know Shannon's been struggling with that as well, Yeah, Uh, yeah, but it's really hard right now. If you are losing to figure out Mm -hmm. because there's no, there's no Avenue. So it's tough. It's definitely tough, but you are right. I'm leaning on some of my other people. I know that the Stacy match is dropping. I'm really, uh, you know, I'm really excited for the fact that she is just a, a beast and, and works really hard. I can't say what happens in that, but I think mm-hmm. that she, similar to my top tier guys, gives it 110%. Doesn't mean it always gets you the victory, but uh, she's somebody I'm really happy to have on my team and the odd couple in general. No, absolutely. First of all, your skin Absolutely. looks good. Your skin looks your skin looks good. What do you think? Thanks, doing? honey. I have I only have moisturizer on right now. Oh, cool. I haven't um, been wearing makeup much. I I think I put lip good. gloss on for you. Oh, that a lot. Well, I I did. I put lip gloss on because right. you get so weird about like imagery. Oh yeah. Well, I like to look at I like to, you know, cycle in. I was trying to impress you. From the head. How do you do? Good. <laughs> I look good too. Anyway, g- going back to the schmo down here, nobody's out of it yet. Even if you're in last place, there's still there's still a, a chance here. Uh, I mean, look, you know, are, uh, is the Finstock Exchange blessed? Yeah, of course we are. I mean, we got four of the best players, five of the best players. We, I mean, our whole roster is stacked with personality and people who know how to play trivia. Th- that's why you know they were they were uh, drafted like that. You know, we don't draft morons here at the Finstock Exchange. We yes, draft- your draft was amazing. You did such a great job. I'm so yeah. happy that Roka was stoked on it and that you were promised four yeah, of the top was, tier uh, people in I general. Mean, great I mean, job, I mean, Tom. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. I put myself in a predicament to win like that. It's not my fault that they won the year, you know, at the end of last year. To oh, my fucking get, God. Jump back on my team. Now, if they didn't, then, no, yeah, those guys would have been out there. But like I said, the biggest mistake, and everybody is going to kick themselves in the ass when a man like Barbarian within a year or two will be in the Mount Rushmore talk. He w- he I- might have been he might have been the best pick of the match I w- I, or of the draft. I will say, Absolutely Tom, he was, not even a question. He was an excellent one. Um, people didn't know. They didn't know. Well, that isn't that what a manager does? He knows stuff and drinks. I mean, that's you don't get that be. reference. What is it? What I is drink it? and I know stuff. You don't get it. Oh yeah, of course I do. But What's I mean, it from? Uh, drink and I know stuff. Isn't it from like, uh, is it from a reality show? Yeah. Uh, is totally. It from Jersey Shore? I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Is it really? No, it's from Game of Thrones. Oh, see, I don't watch it. That's shit. Peter Dinklage's character. I drink I want, and I know I, things. I would never watch that show my whole entire life. Even though uh, I'm Peter Dinklage's stunt double. Uh, but look. Oh my fucking God with some of the things you say. Let me ask these other things in the Streamlabs. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Jake Yacoveta just wanted us to know that Christian announced on backstage well, that the Inner Geekdom tourney will be happening through StreamYard. Uh, 
So good thing we're well-versed in StreamYard and you always know how to click on the link on time, right, Tom? Of course I do. Um, I'm just starting to learn a lot of things about this you know, technology. Because like I said, uh, my main goal in this quarantine was to come out like stronger, sexier, smarter. I've been reading a lot of books. I just finished The Alchemist, George Orwell's 1984. Uh, I read a couple of biographies. Now I'm reading uh, you know, The Midnight Grind. Um, I'm, do I'm doing a ton of puzzles. Uh, you know, let's see, uh, what else am I got going on? Um, just, uh, working out, looking in the best shape I could possibly can, uh, buying Gucci from different outlets and different stores and trying to, what fucking up. question are you answering right now? I'm just saying, <laughs> this is the way I'm operating now. I, I think when you come out of this, you have to be stronger as a person. And that's exactly what I'm coming down to, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Glenn says, thanks for giving us another great show, Roxy and Tom. This one was a classic that'll go down in history and become a part of the lore of Live at the Roxy for sure. Two thumbs up. Last question for you, Tom. Favorite mm -hmm. artist slash band uh, and favorite album and song to re-listen to. Are you a big music person? Yeah, of course I am. What do you, um, what do you mean, of course you are? I, I like, I, I've been currently listening to the Stand By Me soundtrack, which is fantastic. There's a song on it called Mr. Lee. It's really great. Um, but no, I'm a, I like 90s hip hop, um, but I like everything. I mean, I'm a Phil Collins guy. I'm a Michael Bolton guy. Uh, I'm a Boogie Nights soundtrack guy. Uh, a lot of 70s and 60s and 70s stuff. Gary Just Puckett. like any artist, you're naming so many soundtracks. There's a there's a uh, Gary Puckett and a Union Gap band. They sing a, a song called "Young Girl." Get out of my mind. It's pretty amazing. Uh, there is. What did you listen to growing up? What my mom and dad listened to for the most part. What did they listen to? Sixties and seventies, doo wop, Michael McDonald, uh, you know, eighties uh, Prince, and uh, just basically uh, pretty much you know uh, Dire Straits and. Oh, it's kind of rock bands ish. Not like I'm not like a Rolling Stones guy or all this other like folk bullshit. You know, I don't listen to that. I listen to Harry what Nielsen. What's the word you just said? Folk bull. Yeah, folk like folk music, like bullshit. Folk like, bull or oh, folk bullshit. Yeah, like Dave Matthews and these all these other clown clown stuff. Wow. Frank Stone. I do, I do listen to Frank Stone. Yeah, you have right. an issue with Dave Matthews band? I just don't like. I just don't like the way these you know or like fish or. Uh, whatever, whatever else people like, uh, you know, go see and travel on tour with them and things like that. But I, used to, I'm, I used I'm getting to like cracked up by this. You don't even respond to any of these things, and they're fucking incredible. Uh, like Christian, the, crushing it. Disease rat. Yeah, it's this whole thing. What? What? The, what? You just think you are, and you're fine with it? Well, yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't really care. We are getting out of here. Whatever in a he wants. He um, can call me whatever he wants, but he, he, you know, as long as he doesn't call me a non-winner. That's for sure. I am a fan of Kansas. I am a fan of Kansas, actually. You okay. didn't do anything and to win. Collins. And you literally did nothing. You did nothing to win. What are you talking about? You I just don't know, do, do fucking anything. I drafted, I drafted the Barbarian. And I give these guys... That is your one. That is the one move you made that I think was a good move. Uh, no, Riley was down in the dumps. I fixed Riley. You know, uh, It's so we, not right for you to say you fixed Riley. I did. He was finished. He was mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Roka wasn't finished, but Roka needed and Roka just needed to get pushed over the mountain again. And that's exactly what he did. And now he's the best again. Yes, Damn you are Roka. right. You you are the one who made Roka. How did people not see did that? Did not say that. Don't put those words in my mouth. Did not say that. I said You we, said you pushed him over the mountain. Yeah. Was, that, was that an elderly David. joke? No, no. And the same thing as Ben. They were all, we were all, look, we were all scrambling. We were, we, like I said before, at the, the Manager of the Year Awards, we were this close to not being a faction anymore. One more oh, loss, yeah. and we were finished. Full of and shit. And it all turned around. Oh, you're so That's why we're in shit. first place here. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Um, Rocky or, you know, Teen Wolf, Purple Rain, Boogie Nights. Rambo. You know what I watched for the first time the other day? Uh, not related to what you were just saying, but related to good soundtracks. Mm -hmm. uh, Gross Point Blank. Oh, you yeah. ever see that? John Cusack? Yeah, that movie was yeah. fucking good. Fantastic movie. It's a really I love, good I love one. movies. I just don't retain the knowledge, you know? I've been watching all kinds of movies. I've been watching, actually, I've been watching TV a lot. I really liked Pretty Little Fires or Little Fires Everywhere. That was a really good show. It's pretty Little Liars. Yeah. Little Fires Everywhere. Which one yeah. did you watch? I watched Little Fires Everywhere and 
the liar one or whatever. Big Little Lies. I like that. No, too. not Big Big Little Lies is the third one. Big Little Lies and Pretty Little Fires Everywhere. <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> anyway, oh my I God. Watched, anyway, I watched them. Uh, also, I watched uh, Debs. Debs? Yeah, Devs. That's the sci-fi really, one, right? I really haven't seen good, it. Really good show. I'm a big Nick Offerman guy. People say I look like I him. I love Nick Offerman too. You do I kind of look like him. Yeah. You have a similar vibe, like the uh, wilderness man thing. Yeah, yeah. That eats steak and shit. Did you watch that uh, thing? Anybody in here? Did you guys watch The Office? They did. Not sorry, not The Office. Uh, Parks and Rec. They did that. They came back for an episode this week. Did you watch that shit? Uh, I After all these not. years off, they came back for an episode. Did they just one episode? Yeah, they came back for one episode that they did in quarantine, and it was, it was fucking good. awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really fun. Um, but I, I feel like not that many people were talking about it because you didn't even know it was happening. It was really fun. Definitely worth uh, your time. It's for free on YouTube right now. This guy's asking how Sean Penn's doing these days. Sean Penn has started. What, is he your friend? Yeah. He started uh, a big coronavirus testing facility down in Malibu. Sean Penn is a humanitarian. He helped out people in, uh, he helped out people in Hurricane Katrina. He helped out people in Africa. He helped out people in Haiti. What is this rant? I'm just saying. The guy's asking how Sean Penn is. I'm telling him how he is. He, You're talking, uh, but like I think he means currently. You're just talking about his history. Well, now he is. He is, uh, like I said, doing uh, antibody tests on coronavirus in Malibu. So he is doing humanitarian things again because that's what he does. Because he's Sean Penn. He's the best. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't want to leave you because you are going to definitely be the most entertaining part of my day. Are we at 300 subscribers yet? Because we need to be on that. Let's check in, guys. Where are we at? I could stay on for, if, they, if we can get to 300, I could stay on for another 20 minutes. Oh, 287. No, we can do that in the next two minutes, guys. Let's get subscribed. Anybody who subscribes to Finstock Exchange Podcast, which is where Tom is making his massive announcement tomorrow about what he's doing with his show um, or whatever he's doing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, Maybe but you something... I would love that. Uh, make sure you subscribe. I'll give you a shout out. Come on. Jake just put it in here. Matt says, come on, people. Totally. Uh, well, you don't want to miss it because then you're going to get the notification. We don't know exactly uh, how else you're going to know. Show. We're at 292 right now. So we need more people. Get the it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best show on the internet. Um, but no, I think I think going forward. What, is, what, what can you say? Can you tell us anything? Yeah, it's going to be, you know, there's going to be a, a bunch of different shows. You it's told be us a little bit, but the best it's, show on the know, internet? That's yeah, it's, well, it's going to be the best channel on the internet because it's going to have so much entertainment coming from so many different levels of me. You know, you're going to get, I'm going to dress up in a suit. I'm going to be smoking pipes, answering like real philosophical questions. But then I'm going to also be dressed in like a, you know, Speedos answering like, you know, stupid questions. Tom, your head looks like someone painted a face on a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I did tell him that he does have a big forehead. Uh, shout out to I didn't know that. Zachary Gibbons, Dominic the Writer. I think we're almost there right now, guys. Uh, we're at we're gonna make 298, it two more people. Tom it's is so, human clickbait. Yeah, that's what I am. Well, I mean, yeah, but I deliver. Are you going to work out again today? Yeah, I got to get my heart beat up three, four times a day. You know, whatever that takes, you know, push-ups, yeah. other kind of push-ups. Matt, thanks for subscribing. The, the uh, good stuff, you know, the good stuff. I people don't fucking like know. I, said, I know nothing people, about what you people need. Nothing you like in a pandemic. People need guys like me for all the time, but in a the pandemic, they definitely need me. That's they do. Oh my god, even worse than it, it, listen. The world right now is in big trouble. There's there's murdering hornets. What are they called? Murder hornets now. I, I just heard about this shit yesterday. I think it's like a what Chinese, the fuck it, is it, it? it? It's probably like a little drone bug from china or something who knows what's going on with these people like everything's coming out of china right now and everything that comes out of it is nothing good to be honest uh i, I don't do don't be that person who says shit like that well no but don't I mean, be look, ignorant no you no can be, not, you can be well, stupid but don't be being real about it like i mean uh, nothing they, good comes out of china no i didn't say I said recently recently i'm not talking about the people i'm just oh talking about whatever you know the God. murder hornets and they got this, that, and the other thing coming out. It's uh, this is a, a lot. This is what happens stuff. when we run long. Thank God we just hit three hundred subscribers, so you don't say some more did dumb we? shit. Yeah, we did. Congratulations. No, I, didn't say, I didn't say anything bad. I just said that this is what's going you on. You said today. nothing good comes out of China recently. Recently, recently. The now, fuck my buddy does Wang, that mean? My buddy Wang is one of my best friends. 
He oh can no, have. don't use that. Oh, we got to get out of here. Okay, guys. So tomorrow, what time are you doing? Yeah, the show? His name is Wayne. What? what? Oh my fucking God. What time are you doing your show tomorrow? What time are you doing your announcement? Uh, I got to talk to my people, my producers and stuff like that, but we'll have it there. Uh, I'll tweet it out and then you retweet it and then, you know, we'll get people watching. Then you'll come on once a month and we'll do, uh, yep. we'll do tales from the pleasure chest. Gucci. I do. I, I'm excited to go there again when I don't think they're open right now. No, well, they are. We can go through the back door. I know. Uh, no, my fucking God. Uh, Tom, thanks for joining you and all it. your weirdness glory. Uh, everybody look out for his announcement tomorrow. If you follow him on social media, he'll tweet it out. So at Bob Finstock on yes. Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, that's where he'll he'll let you know. I'll definitely be watching because you're weird as shit and I love mm -hmm. every part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, to who everybody thinks is my arch nemesis, Tom Dagnino, everybody at home, round of applause for him. Ooh, this is the best moment of his day being clapped for. What is that? That happens every day. That's that, you? It's a, it's a sign to somebody. Are you Illuminatiing? No, 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 no. That's something different. What this, the fuck was that? It's a, it's a number. It's, it's a, a number? number? Yeah, somebody, know, somebody knows it. They're watching. They know what it is. What? Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's just something that I do. You know? Who's tomorrow watching? It might, tomorrow it might change. You never know. Who's watching that knows about that? Probably the feds. What the fuck is that? Uh, oh my God. John Campbell, Finstock, 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 just subscribed. Well, you guys are certainly in for a treat. I'll see you guys tomorrow live at the Roxy. Koi is coming on tomorrow. Excited to oh, have him. Yeah, Ooh, Koi's like joining us tomorrow. Every day? I go seven days a week. Yeah. Really? That's great. Yeah. It's, uh, it's my social hour, so I love it. On Thursday, Wendy is coming on. But, guys, I did tell you we're not going to go up at 1 because I'm doing a gig for Rotten Tomatoes that day. So we're going to go up at 3 o'clock instead. Um, and then on Saturday, your arch nemesis other one, Kaiser, uh, is coming on. Are you guys cool? Are you are you frenemies? Who? Kaiser? No, no, we're great. We're okay. going we're gonna to be doing some real fun stuff. I mean, good. Oh yeah, and then Sabrina on Monday, your Ooh. girl crush. She's yeah, coming she's, on. She's about to come on my show too. I might make her a regular, uh, regular competitor here, but she's got a. I'm gonna take her shop, and she's gonna wear some new stuff. Uh, what the fuck does that mean? Well, I'm gonna take her shopping. I'm dead. I'm done with you. Bye. Wait, no, hold on. I want to say what? Uh, what? What do you want to say? Filming, I'm filming Little Bobby and Andrew season two right now. That'll be out uh, shortly. You can go subscribe to that channel too. That's a separate entity though. Um, this is this season is going to be unbelievable because I went on a writing tear and I wrote eight episodes in under twenty four hours. So wait till you see what happens here. I'm on a is that a good level. thing? I'm on a whole new level of genius. You'll see. You'll see. Trust me. It's that's the best show on the internet. And then oh, the second God. Next show will be my channel. So everybody who wants a real taste of life and they want to like where do I rank? Uh, what on shows? Mm -hmm. Well, this was actually a really good show because she didn't cut me off or say anything or, or try to like throw me into backstage like other, a lot of other people do. So I what think. I mean, throw you into backstage. You know how it says like back, you're the person's backstage. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have, I could have taken you moron. down. There's a couple of specific morons who uh, throw me off when I start going on on wild tangents. No, but I, I'll let you dig your yeah, own grave anytime. Well, yeah, they're making a big, pro they're making a big stink of things. You know, these guys are morons. But anyway. Uh, oh yeah, I play I play Makuga in uh, Seinfeld trivia Friday on Josh Makuga's channel as well, so that should be fun. Who's gonna win? Come on, I mean, he's a really good player, but like my knowledge of Seinfeld trivia and how deep it goes is terrifying. Yeah, it's terrifyingly awesome. Did you say the things you needed to say? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna be at uh, I'm gonna be at Trader Joe's Calabasas. Uh, today at four o'clock. What? Yeah. I'm going to be shopping out there. I'm not signing autographs or anything. I'm just shopping out there. I don't go, I don't, I don't shop in LA anymore. There's too much foot traffic. You go to places where there's not that much foot traffic and they have everything. So I'll be there. And if you come by, I'll sign an autograph if you want. I'm done. We're yeah. done. I'm fucking done. Bye. All right. See ya.